The 1960s, as Mrs. Vreeland always said, was about fringe and movement. It was really the youth quake. And in America, uh, that was manifested in an embrace of everything that was short, clean, young. The 70s was a more complex time, much more uh, eclectic in its sensibility. Uh, the earlier part of it was an embrace of all that was uh, back to the earth against uh, the kind of plasticity that was associated with the establishment. Uh, it was artisanal, uh, touchy-feely, but at the same time, uh, there was an emerging much more urbane movement, uh, which we saw with the disco culture. Uh, and that, I think, uh, captivated uh, people equally uh, to that of the hippie culture. The 80s was a moment where, for the first time, one saw women in mass uh, taking over positions of power and authority, and so it was the uh, emergence of a kind of parity between uh, men and women in the workplace, and that was an exciting moment. Also, America was ex ex extremely fortunate in terms of uh, an economic resurgence, and because of that, there was a kind of luxury that flooded the market and was reflected in clothing. The 90s began with uh, a rejection, almost, of uh, everything that was manifested in the ostentation of the 80s, all that exuberant uh, manifestations of luxury that one saw in uh, fashion. Um, but also, uh, the 90s is a time of uh, reflection and uh, suddenly the understanding by a vast number of consumers that one could construct one's own identity. And because of that, there was a fragmenting of expressions uh, in dress that I think is very healthy. There was a new eclecticism. American fashion is at an exciting juncture in the sense that uh, for the first time we have American designers on the world stage uh, with a uh, very strong presence internationally. Uh, one, one of the things I think that has happened uh, in American fashion is that so much of our sensibility, the idea that good design didn't necessarily have to sacrifice uh, the pragmatism, the, the actual functionality that was the requirement of clothing, uh, that's somehow become universal. Uh, there are still uh, ways in which um, I think the world can transform uh, based on the American approach, which is inherently uh, one that has to do with uh, sensibility and uh, practicality without sacrificing originality and creativity. And that's something as a strategy that I think is going to permeate the uh, world culture uh, even more consistently than it has in the past. One of the most exciting things about uh, Bonnie Cashin, of course, is she emerges out of the American sportswear tradition, so it's all about separates. It's coordinating these extraordinary fabrics that she developed herself, together with certain signature elements, um, like Claire McArdle, who used her button hooks um, for her closures. Uh, Bonnie uh, used these uh, twist toggles uh, consistently uh, through her clothing. Uh, in this particular instance, a Bonnie, who was always an advocate of clothing that did work, uh, has actually attached uh, two suede pockets uh, to her garment uh, as uh, practical uh, accessories to a very beautifully hand-loomed uh, wool coat. One of the most original of the American designers uh, that uh, anticipates uh, the creativity that's to come in the 1960s and 1970s was Charles James. Charles James is uh, the only fashion designer uh, in this country who ever got a Guggenheim Foundation Award uh, because he really did conceive of uh, the design of clothing as art. And one can see in this particular piece, which is shaped like the carapace of an insect, uh, that his consideration of the body was not typical of most fashion designers in that it wasn't about front and back, it was about these almost cubistic shapes that creep past the side seam into the front, um, forming this extraordinary geometry over the body. This particular group uh, is designed by Gilbert Adrian uh, and manifests one of the great traditions in American fashion. 
I think that the movies of the 1920s, 30s, and 40s has influenced world fashion. Uh, but certainly, it's something uh, that has been taken to heart by many American designers. You have to remember that these were done immediately after the war, World War II, and as a consequence of that, uh, still have something of the limitation of uh, fabric. Um, everything is pieced together in this asymmetrical way. You can see how a subtle silhouette of a head uh, intrudes on the shoulder of, the, uh, of this particular gown. Uh, that becomes something that is an Adrian signature a careful piecing of material rather than an overlay that's an applique. Uh, what he does is very, very much about technique that's hidden, uh, secretive, uh, and known only to the wearer. These two dresses uh, suggest to me uh, that moment of transition between the 1960s and the 1970s. Norman Orell in the 1960s uh, creates this Hollywood-style glamour, but with uh, his signature elegance and restraint. It's a completely uh, over-sequined uh, silk jersey gown uh, with an extended uh, floor-length gilet. It's a sleeveless vest that has the trompe l'oeil appearance of uh, an evening overcoat. In a similar fashion, Halston, in this wonderful caftan, takes this sumptuous uh, silk lamé and allows the liquid drape of the fabric uh, to create uh, all of its glamour. Uh, the elegance of this dress is not in the complexities of its cut, but really in the richness of uh, the reaction of the fabric to gravity. Pauline Trigere was uh, an extraordinary designer and one of the ones who was uh, perhaps the most accomplished at creating flattering dresses for women who are well endowed. And every fashion designer realizes that uh, that's the most difficult thing to do, to create a very chic silhouette for someone who is naturally voluptuous. And uh, Pauline was someone who had a very consistent strategy uh, in terms of doing this. Uh, in this particular instance, the shoulders are extended by creating a halter neckline. By cutting that in, uh, the cap of the shoulder is extended, so there's some sense of structure there. By using a princess seam, uh, there is an elongation of the torso and a differentiation of the bust line from the waistline, uh, which is always a problem uh, uh, in terms of creating a more elegant line. And uh, to create a kind of flirtatious but not too revealing skirt, uh, she cleaves the dress to the hip line and then flares out the hem uh, to create this very sculptural uh, trumpet shape.